Okay, so today I'm going to be teaching how I extrude. This isn't probably the proper way, the best way, but this is how I extrude. Um, we're going to start out with just some simple body extrudes. So, on your uh, character's body here, let's say they have a belt around here. So, um, just for most purposes, you're going to want to be in face select mode for this. Um, and just a reminder, my keybinds are in 2.79, not 2.8, so things might not line up, but I'm sure you guys can work it out. So, I'm going to select this loop for the belt, which is going to be, I'm going to move my mouse to around here. It doesn't matter where, just along this edge. Shift, Alt, and right click. And now you can see that I've selected this whole loop around it. If I do it up here, it creates those loops. If I do it along one of these edges, it creates vertical loops. But we're worried about this one. So for a belt, there are two ways you can go about it. The proper way and the easy way. So the proper way would be to take this, press E, then cancel that immediately by right clicking. Or pressing escape or any of that. But now you can see we have a duplicate of the face. Or well, it's like separated from these. If I undo that, you can see it's all part of it. And now it's all separated. So we're going to press S, Y, and scale it out. Um, another thing, make sure you, you are on median point for your origin. S, Y, scale it out. And then S, X, and scale it out. Um, and there is your basic extrusion. Simple as that. And the faces might not line up properly. So what we're going to do is these faces, if they are flashing or Z fighting for you. Don't worry about the shading, by the way. Um, just go up here, pull up a second window, set it to UV editor, and take a look. Move them to just a little bit down. You can use G and then Y to lock it. And do the same for the bottom ones. Oh, here we go. You see it's Z fighting. So you do that, G, Y, and now it's no longer Z fighting. So there we go. We've got our basic little extrusion done. But as you can tell, it looks pretty hideous. So what we're going to do is first we're going to do select, then sharp edges. That'll select most of the edges we want, but not quite all of them. So to get the rest, we're going to press Control E or go up to this edge menu and click Mark Sharp. Now we are going to do select, select similar by sharpness. What that'll do is these extra faces all along the mesh and any others we've missed will also get selected. So we can go select similar, sharpness. Now, now they're selected. Now we go to item in our toolbar and increase to one. You can see all of, all of these faces selected, but they're all nice and purple now. If we were to turn off Simplify, you can see everything works. Now, without me increase, it'll look like this. Um, so it's very important that you follow through with these steps. You can turn Simplify back on. Now, we can exit to that, and we, we've gotten a basic extrusion. But that takes a little long. Let's say you need to get something done quick and dirty. And you want to do it the easy way. So they've got, Steve's got a second belt up here. Oh, see? Wrong one. So I'm back in face select mode and I can select this. Now I'm going to do this. Shift D to duplicate our faces and then right click or escape to cancel the action again. Now we've just duplicated them without moving them. Doesn't matter where they were. Pressing escape or, or right clicking will reset them to where they began. Um, so now we're going to just press E, S, and Shift Z. And what that'll basically do is extrude, scale, and then scale on what axis. Shift Z will do everything but the Z axis, and that works for the other axes, Shift X, Y, etc. Or I can just press S, Y, S, X, and it'll move on those axes. But Shift Z will do both at the same time, but it's not quite even for things like this. So we gotta adjust it manually in the Y. Now, what I like to do 
is hover over this. Since we duplicated this, it's a separate object. So you can hover over and press L, then Shift H. That localizes it, uh, selects the whole object, and then localizes it. See, lots of shading issues, but no Z fighting. So we can repeat the steps from before. Edge select mode, sharp edges, mark sharp, select similar, sharpness, mean crease. Boom. Now, this mode is cleaner. It takes a little longer, but it's cleaner because there's no extra vertices. Alt H to unhide when you're done, by the way. You can see in here, this is kind of dense inward, while this is like whiter than the rest. That is because there are extra faces here. You could optimize this by just deleting those faces, deleting that, and then merging by distance. But that can cause, as you can see, some shading issues that you'll have to redo this for. So sharp edges, mark sharp, sharpness, and then boom. And now it's basically the same thing as the other one. But personally, just stick with doing this one unless you really need to do the other one. But that's extrusions. Um, another thing you may see people do for bodies and arms and stuff is tapering. Um, in Minimator, tapering is a bit different and it involves a lot of complicated things. But here, all you need to do is go to edge select mode, then choose a vert, um, something like this right before where you want the tapering to start so, and just S and then scale it out a little bit and then I do SX so it sticks out on the sides a little more then you adjust these the same way and it's hollow on the inside still but this allows us to get a nice taper effect now this is pretty bad but it's just for demonstration purposes There we go. Now this, you can see here, it's sharp. And then here it's this weird smooth. To fix this, we are going to do, we're going to select this row where the point is and mark sharp and mean crease. There's no need to select because we're only doing this specific area. But there we go. And that is tapering. Now, extrusions for arms is pretty similar. Oh, this one has fingers on. Eh, yeah, we can deal with it. So, make sure you're on the basis shape key if you're extruding with fingers, because otherwise it won't work. Extruding for arms, for example. I like to do a cuff effect, but this is where I use the duplicate mode. I duplicate it, extrude it out, and then press L, and move it down slightly. Now I can take edge select mode, take this, scale it out, take this, scale it out, um, and adjust this as needed. Um, it's a little short here because of the skin, but it still works. Mark sharp and mean crease. And it's a little puffy there, but it is extruded. I wouldn't do, oh, don't overdo tapering. You want to be careful with it. But that's about it for the basics of extruding. Never use the solidify modifier unless you're doing hair. It's useful there. For example, if I wanted to do the hair, I can go into the character, select face select mode, just use the selection brush to get all of it, which if you don't know, press C to bring up and click and drag middle click and drag to get rid of faces and scroll wheel to change the radius there we go um so now that we've got all the hair selected you can press Control i or if it's that it's not the keybind for you for some reason just bring up your search menu you can look in preferences to see what your keybind is for me it's spacebar but for others it might be f2 f3 and search invert uh, invert selection. Oh no, it's just right there. There you go. Uh, then press X and faces. Now you're left with the hair model. 
So what I do for this is I take, um, go to the modifiers tab, solidify, and I go in just, a, a, I go inwards, never outwards, because that creates that. That is ugly. We go inwards. And then uh, make sure even fi thickness is on because it fixes corners like this from this. Yeah, it's just important. There are times where you need to go in here, select like faces these. You can, you can see where there's a missing face here, but one there it creates this weird bend in. To fix that, just select them and press Y. That separates them and fixes the issue. I just extrude it in until I think it's thick enough. And then once I'm done, I can go out and scale it up until about good. And uh, once it's at a scale I like, um, I can go ahead and hide the hat layer. Um, control A to apply it. Now our um, thing is applied and you can go in here and make um, adjustments to the hair shape. Um, so if you want like a little rounded top, you can, I guess. Another thing I like to do is before applying, um, going in here and deleting these corners. You don't need to, but it can smooth it out a bit, but for this instance, I'm going to keep them. Um, you can also take the edges of the character's hair. This is just up to you and how you want to do things. Duplicate them and um, make sure you don't have proportional editing on. Scale them out, down, rotate. Um, you can get some hair bits here. Scale, rotate, move. Um, you can get some bits along the top to match up. Now, this is probably the worst extrusion job I've ever done, but it works. You get the idea. You can mess around with your hair like that and be stylistic. And that's that's it for extruding, really. You just keep practicing it. You can create more of your own style, and um, everything will look better in the end. Another thing I realized to do is I forgot to select sharp edges. Select sharp edges. Mark sharp. Select similar. Sharpness. Mean crease. There we go. And now you can test the rig out. See, everything will work fine. Nothing wrong with it. Everything bends properly. And everything works.